How's it going guys? It's going off grid. And today we got the Rock Solar. I believe this one's called the Weekend Warrior. It's their smallest unit. I'm going to be doing a little review on this. This uh, just got out of the packaging. I'm charging it because i got to start the review with a full charge. It came with three quarters of a charge. I'll show you what's in the box. Well, what's in the box obviously is the unit. It comes with the charging cable. Came with a few extra things. Came with a cigarette lighter, so you can plug that into the front. You can run like a little cooler, you can run anything that a cigarette lighter would run. You got your manual. You got your warranty information. And then this little box came with the charger, and it came with this cord. And that is it for the box. How's it going guys? It's going off grid. Oh, wait a second, you can't see anything. Here we go. Let's turn that on. And in this video, we're going to be talking about this. You guys still can't see. Well, let's plug this cord in then. This review is going to be done with the, with this uh, light's own power, or this uh, power station's own power. Let's turn on the inverter. There we go. Now we can see something. Just kind of point that up in the air so we get the light bouncing off of the ceiling. Turn this back off. We are sitting at 50% charge because I used this at work today. I was, been, I was working inside a house. There's no power in the house yet and it's raining very dark outside and in the basement of this house there is no power as well and it's super dark so I used this. It's been sitting at 50% for a very long time. I feel like uh, the first two bars go fairly quickly and the second two last longer. It's been working really well. And now, I was working like this. I didn't use a DeWalt charger, but I'm curious to see if I can charge a battery at the same time as, as uh, this light. So if I was actually working down there, I have this battery. It's got two out of three bars. Let's see if it works. I definitely saw the light flicker a little bit. It seems to be working just fine. So we are powering a DeWalt charger. This is just a standard charger, not the fast charger. A fast charger, I don't think this thing would run. But a standard charger is running. Oh, we're down to one bar. Like I said, I've been using this all day. Well, not all day. Uh, I've been using this half a day with this light. And now I plug this in. And it seems to be working just fine. Now we're going to take a look at the sine wave, because this is a super small unit and it does not have a pure sine wave inverter. And if it did, oh boy, that'd be super impressive, but it's so small, I don't I don't know if they could fit it in the small of a space as well as uh, the amount of battery capacity that it has. It's fairly impressive. Oh, it's, it's blinking fast at me. It must be, uh, the voltage droop must be enough where it's not very happy. Okay, there is our sine wave. So it is modified. And I can tell that the inverter is drooping in power. I'm probably running this right close to its 120 watt max between the two. So you know what? I'm going to actually take the... Let's take the charger off for now. And I'm going to take a look at the sine wave when we're not maxing out the inverter. So that was a maxed out sine wave. And then this is probably under about 50% use, so this is probably around 40 watt LED light. I think this can do 80 watts continuous. And there we are. I'm going to lower the trigger so it holds it in one spot. There we go. Let's see if you can see that there. So it's, an, it's a modified sine wave. It looks fine. Nothing wrong with it. No crazy spikes or anything anywhere. So that looks quite nice. We also got the flashlight that it comes with, and it blinks and does SOS and all that stuff. But what I like better, I, I like this nice yellow lamp that's really nice. And the fact that it has the inverter on it really makes this... Like, I have the small power packs. They're, like, they're a tiny bit smaller than this, but all they have is the USB. Well, this one's way more usable with the fact that you got two plugs on the front. And then you still got four USB outlets, you got uh, 12 volt DC out and USB-C. 
And this thing, I believe, is on Amazon for $129. I believe that's what I paid for it. And honestly, for that price, it's quite nice because it's so small. Okay, we got another use for this little Rock Solar Weekender power supply or, or uh, power station. Other than being a light, charger for your phone, and all these other things, you can use it for movie night. Here we got a 1200 lumen projector. It's just plugged in, so you can see there's your wires. I extended the wire on this uh, um, little power, power bar here so I could put the projector further away from a plug. So anyways, we're going to turn the inverter on. You can see here. There the light turned on. There the projector turned on. And I will point this up a little bit. Use this little roll of paper towel maybe. That might be too much, but if I squish it down it might be alright. Anyways, there we go. We got ourselves a little portable TV setup. It's going through its uh, little boot sequence. How much power are we taking right now? Oh, it's not even that bad. It's only 50 watts. That's awesome. So if this was, if you made your own little portable theater setup, you could have a nice little lamp in the background, run your projector. All right, let's focus this a little bit here. And we do have the lights on in this room. And the light is on on my phone. So this this actually is quite a bright projector for so such a small thing. And I'm actually surprised it's only taking 50 watts. That's crazy. So this thing should be able to run this projector for over two hours. No, sorry. Just under two hours. Because this is 88 watt hours. So just under two hours. Anyways, let's see what else we can run on this thing. Okay, we're out in the garage and we're going to do a few tests with this Rock Solar Weekender. This is a 200 watt soldering iron. It says 200 watts. We'll see if it is actually 200 watts because we'll see if this thing can run it. This can do 80 watts continuous, 120 watts peak. I don't know how long it can do 120 watts. And we got a 40 watt soldering iron. I'm going to see if we can get something in between that. Alright, I found another one. This is a 18 watt soldering iron. So, we're going to test this thing out. We're going to turn the lamp on because I want to see if... Actually, I'm going to put it on low. It's not so bright for you guys. See if we can see it dimming when we uh, put loads on it. Alright, so let's try... Let's First off, let's just see what if we can run it to 100 watt. See, it's the switch off, switch is off, we're going to plug it in. I don't know if you guys can see this. Maybe I'll turn this off for a second. But there's a little orange light that very dimly comes on. And let's see if it stays on. Here we go. Still on so far. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, it's on. And this claims to be 200 watt soldering iron, but it might not actually be 200 watts. Say heating up. Yep, yep, I can feel it now. It's starting to heat up. Definitely starting to heat up. Actually, now it's starting to heat up real quick. That's it. No more touching that. Wow, that is. Oh, well, that's 200 watts, so this might be less than 200 watts. So I'm going to have to get myself a kilowatt meter. Shut this off. Stayed full the whole time. It didn't seem to sag in voltage. I'm going to be back at the kilowatt meter. Okay, now we have a kilowatt meter here. I'm going to turn it on. There's nothing on the display. Turn the inverter on. Kilowatt meter shows up. I'm going to shut that off and plug in. The 200 watt soldering iron. Let's see what it actually takes here. 127 watts. Oh crap, that's pretty good. I was actually holding this. Let's go function. Voltage is down to 103 volts because it's really pushing it. If I turn this off, 
goes back up to 110. So it really doesn't sag that much. 110 volts is on the lower side of uh, of uh, for 100 and they're called 115, 110 volt, 120 volt outlets, but usually out of the grid you get around 117, 118 volts, something around there. So it honestly doesn't sag that much. And they do this on purpose. They on these little power packs, not all the companies do this, but if you run 110 volts versus 120 volts, most most uh, uh, appliances will take less power at 110 volts than 120 volts, making it last longer on battery power. But some some appliances, not very many, but some which have a power factor correcting something inside to boost the voltage up, say it runs off DC. It'll take the same amount of power or a little bit more power. So it just depends on what appliance you're running, but 110 volts can actually make your battery last longer. So it goes down to 103 volts. Oh, that's the low. Let's go back to watts again. Just watts. Turn this on. So I think that's a pretty good test. So this is about the maximum this thing can run. And that's 127 watts. It's rated at 80 watts, so I think this is extremely, extremely good. And the fan hasn't even turned on yet. There's a tiny fan that turns on it once you load this down for a long period of time. Nope, it has not turned on yet. So I'm pretty happy with that. And the battery hasn't even gone down. Usually under load, it, it would dip down to like three bars instead of four bars, but it hasn't done that at all. Okay, well, let's run something else. I'm not even going to bother with the other soldering irons because it, if it can run this one, it's going to run these two together no problem. Okay, so we have the inverter on, sitting at 0.2 watts with this Champion charger. I got this big Champion generator here, and this is just a maintenance charger. This is one other thing you could use it for, and this is what I'm going to use it for, just to top this battery off for a little bit. We are charging. It's only taking 11, 11 watts, but you know what? If you have this in, outside or something or in a shed and you got no power, you could take this little thing, dump some power into it, get it to float. That'll save your your uh, generator battery because I know most of the people I know that have generators, their batteries are no good, and they're no good because they never charge them. I don't believe most of these generators have like an alternator or a generator in them at all that charges the battery. The, the battery only gets charged by the maintenance charger, which is a really bad design, but that's the way they do it. And this battery of mine, she's going to be good. Because I try to charge it like this every, I try to do it every three months, no later than that. We're already dropping off in, uh, in watts because... The battery is coming up in voltage. Anyways, that's just another uh, application you can use this little battery pack for, other than camping. Okay, in conclusion here. Do I like this thing? Do I think it's worth the money? And do I think it's fairly durable? Well, I had it in my car today. I had a bunch of skill saws and stuff stacked on top of it because my car is very small and this is, just happened to be at the bottom. And it actually didn't even get hardly scratched up at all. Didn't get really good damage or anything. And I think for the price, I did pay for this myself. And I didn't think it was overpriced in comparison to other batteries that do not even have an inverter and are not capable of being charged with solar. So I do think it's pretty nice. Now time will tell how long this product will last, but from the looks of it, it looks like it's built pretty nice. So I don't think there'll be an issue, but I'll give you guys updates on this in the future and possibly a video on this uh, being charged off solar. And yeah, thanks for watching guys.